Hi Floss Tube, it's Helen D. I am back. I wanted to talk to you guys all about the Library Stitchers Retreat. Uh, it was held, today's the 23rd of April. It was held this past weekend. I don't know when I'm going to upload this video, but it was held mid-April in Augusta, Maine, um, and it was fantastic. <laughs> So I had so much to show, I thought I'm just going to make a separate video um, so that everything doesn't get all kind of grouped together. So the Library Stitchers Retreat, this was the first one they've done. It was put on by a committee of nine, and it was really just a committee of friends. It was a group of women that started meeting at their library, at a local library, to stitch. And that's how a lot of stitching groups form, right? So they said they really they wanted to put on a retreat. And they did, and it was a knockout. <laughs> we had so much fun. So the committee number members, there's two sets of floss tubers who you may be familiar with. It is Missy and Kathy of Two Needles Pulling Thread and Brandy and Emma of B and E Stitchery. And then the other members of the group, it was Ashley, Joanna, Nicole, Abby, and Shirley. And they worked so hard. I've helped with other retreats. I know firsthand how hard they worked. Um, it's a lot of organizing. It's a lot of behind the scenes work. They really, really pulled it all off and everyone did a great job. You could tell that everyone kind of had their own little section of things they were working on and they nailed it every last one. So thank you. It was amazing. Um, this retreat to me personally was a no brainer retreat. <laughs> it was close to home. Uh, it was about a half hour ride for me. I didn't even get a hotel room. It was held at the Kelly Met Club in Augusta, which is a Franco-American um, kind of community club. They have weddings there and dances and a whole bunch of events. It was a big room, not technically like a ballroom, like a hotel, but a big space, a big open space with a stage. Um, they did the catering, so it included lunch and dinner on both days, which personally, for me, I love that because then I don't have to go anywhere. And... When I go to a retreat, yes, I love going out to eat with friends, but you, it's a big chunk of time <laughs> to go out, get a restaurant, wait, come back. So I love it when everything's just right there. <laughs> Easy peasy. I can just push my stuff back, eat, keep going. Um, so yeah, like I said, it was a no-brainer. If they do it again, they haven't said if they would yet. Um, <clears throat> if they will be, I will be there. <laughs> no problem. The other thing, personally, that made this one really fun for me is I wasn't involved. <laughs> I've been to a lot of other retreats, but I've kind of helped out. I've been on the committees. I've helped out there. Um, cat hair. I designed a small for them. Missy asked me if I would. I did. Other than that, I wasn't involved. But I don't mind helping out. But what that meant was... All the little surprises and the fun extra things that they had planned, I had no idea. So it was a surprise for me just as much as everyone else, and that was really fun. I didn't know what the goodie bags looked like. I didn't know what the raffles were. I didn't know like all the little fun things. It was I was learning about them the same time as everyone else, so that was really fun. So uh, it was about 150 people. I know that was... They were aiming for 150 people. Stuff happens. I know last minute, I'm sure they had some people that weren't able to make it. They were from all across the US, Canada. We had a great time. We stitched, we laughed, we shopped. They had a boatload of trunk shows. 11, 12, I don't, it was a lot. They had a lot of trunk shows. They had a lot of vendors. Um, Tracy from OG Stitchery was there. She had made a bunch of bags. Molly from Drooling Moose Designs had a trunk, had a vendor area set up. Stephanie from the New England Stitcher had brought some of her uh, whipper keepers and her wood items. And then Teresa and her husband, I want to say Brian, but I'm bad with names, so Brian, I apologize <laughs> if it's not Brian, uh, of the Crafty Vermalkin had set up a whole spread with a trunk show from Atomic Ranch that they had brought in. So there was all kinds of shopping. Surprisingly, I only bought two things. Um, so it was great. So let's show the goods. Let's start off with the goodie bag. Um, okay, sorry, I couldn't reach something. So the goodie bags, this is what's our goodie bag. And these were handmade. I believe Shirley made these. So it's a moose with the state. 
I live kind of by this leg. <laughs> Augusta is, is, is up in that leg. That's where we were. Um, so the goodie bags had, let me pull stuff out, all kinds of things. A maple candy, surprisingly, still there. My son doesn't like maple. Um, a sticker, the library stitchers, and they call themselves the library stitchers because they meet at the library. They went around day two with a little floss bling. This was Maine's original flag, so I have that. It had these really, I didn't have one of these, so these little stands, I believe they're from Amazon and they fold open so you can put your chart in a needle minder. I believe Stephanie, New England teacher, made those. Um, this is a needle holder. These things kind of, they're out now, but you put your needles in the little holes and then you can close it so you can separate by color. Um, a little lobster charm. A skein of lobster claw from Classic Color Works. A handmade bookmark, which has a needle charm on it. A keychain or a bag charm. Um, and some charts. Now, do these all have pictures? This one does. This is by The Stitching Wren. It's Elizabeth and Fitzwilliam, which is, I believe, Pride and Prejudice. Because, you know, it's library themed. So that was one. Um, this one doesn't have a picture. It was from Finally a Farm Girl. It's a cute little raccoon with some books. Drooling Moose Designs. Had a literary and stitching in hers. So that's what she had in there. And then I designed this one. They had asked for something very main. <laughs> so I mained it up. And this is what I came out with. Um, and I sent these the PDF to Miss to Brandy, who works at a printing company. Can I tell you, just having this printed on this was a gift to me because it looks like so professional. So it's got the chart on the one side and the design on the other side, and it looks fantastic. So this is called Lighthouse Lobsters and Lighthouses, and I stitched up the model for them. So it looks like this. Uh, and this is now available. I'm just putting this out as a free chart if it's something that you'd like to stitch. It is on my website, eastcoastcrafter.com, um, which I will link below. Just a PDF. Not the fancy PDF, but just a PDF. So if that's something you want to stitch. I finished mine with this fun fabric I had, but in the goodie bag, they included a little piece of fabric for if you wanted to finish one of these and use it as the back. Everyone's was a little different, and mine had puffins. So I'll use this for something else. So that was the goodie bag. My two purchases <laughs> were, I bought this chart from Hands On Design, which is an older chart, but it's been on my list for a long time and the model was there and it's the first time I'd ever seen it in person. So it's called Stitching by the Sea and it's two pieces. They're not in color on the back, but you can kind of see a pin cushion and then like a holder. So I got that and I got this B needle minder from the New England Stitcher to use on my B stitch. This top one I'll show you, Brandy and Emma went around and gave out needle minders. So that's theirs. So they're on the same card. Um, Smalls Exchange, I stitched, I showed it in my regular video, but I don't have my phone to show you again. I stitched a piece from uh, Heart and Hand Imprints Berries and Bloom. It was a little strawberry and I finished it as a pillow. And then the one that I got was from Nancy of the Bougie, Bougie Stitchers. And it's this Mill Hill, which I love. You guys know I love these Mill Hills. So it was perfect for me. I'm gonna add a hanger and it will go on my tree. And she made this bag and it was full of goodies. There's some photographed um, like greeting cards to mail out, uh, stickers, a scissor fob, like there was a bunch of extras in there, but like, that's amazing. So I love that. So that was the Smalls Exchange. Um, not everyone did it, but quite a few people did, and there were some beautiful things. I went through the line. I didn't take nearly enough pictures because um, I was just enjoying the moment. <laughs> so it was really, really great. 
stitching retreats, people love sharing gifts. It's amazing. I did gifts for the tables, um, just for the tables, for my table. Um, and then I had a couple lectures that I handed out to some friends that I know I made the beading tins and I have some friends that I know are into beading. So I want to make sure that they got one. I wish I had more. I, I should have brought more. Um, so for my table, I sat with Wendy, Donna, Adina, Deborah, and me. I'm missing one. Who am I missing? Oh, Kat. I'm like, who am I missing? That's how we sat in the circle. <laughs> so for my table, that's what I did. Um, Donna and Adina both, where'd they go? They both gave us some little goodies. Adina made these really cute pin cushions and like some needles and some candies and a needle holder. And Donna had a little pouch with some goodies in it. Um, Wendy made us cookies at 4.30 in the morning on day two, so we had fresh cookies. <laughs> and then Deborah made these really cute pouches from fabric from the New England Shop Hop. Last year, she had some left, so it was great. And she said the zipper pull is what color's on the inside, so I picked this fun kind of aqua. So that was cool. And like I said, there were just, here's my bag, right, of all kinds of just little goodies, little, people are so talented. Rhode Island Deb made this. Um, notebooks, needle minders, flash drops, all kinds of things that I won't go through all of the things, but they're so fun. I really appreciate it. This, I went in with a bag and thought, oh, it'll be lighter when I come home. It was not lighter when I went home. I went home the first night and I had to like clean out so I could go back the second day. Um, and then I had a couple like gift gifts that I wanted to share. Um, this was a needle minder that Justine and Shelly from Welcome Stitchery had at their table. Um, they had a great fun table. They were right behind us. They had little sprout because they're from Blue Earth, Minnesota, Blue Earth, Minnesota. I'll feel bad if I said that wrong. So it's home of the Jolly Green Giant. So he's a little needle minder. He was on a project, I had to pull him off. Um, Penny gave these my social battery pins. So you can kind of let people know if you're feeling, mine is typically at retreats, way up there. Cause I yap, yap, yap. Well, there's Peppy. Uh, June, June got my small in the smalls exchange and she had made a couple, um, she, I don't know what this is, but it's beautiful. Like I'm sure there's a name, but it's this gorgeous pouch. So you open it up, it has snaps. It's a thread bed, right? It's got the ring you can hang stuff on, thing for your needles. And then there's, it's a clutch. I think it's a clutch. There's a pocket on the outside with these mushrooms, they're on the vinyl. I've never seen printed vinyl. And when I was going through stuff, I realized, which I hadn't then, there's an inside pocket. So it's so cool, I can't wait to tuck my little things in there. So thank you, June. Uh, Amy from Two Crossed Stitchers had been talking to me and she mentioned, she knows we do a lot of canning. And she was talking about her favorite jam recipe, which is a strawberry basil jam. And she said, I found, I found you the cookbook. <laughs> so she found a used copy of this cookbook. It's an older book. Um, and she flagged the jam recipe. So this is really cool. And my friend Kat said, oh, I've cooked from that book. It's a good one. So Foolproof Preserving is the name of that book. So I've got to go through and see what we can find. Uh, Tracy from OG Stitchery, like I said, she had a bunch of bags. When I did my kind of whip audit a while ago and I was moving everything around, I cleaned out a bunch of fabrics that I'm like, this has been here forever. I'm just not using it. They were like prints that I had bought probably to make project bags with. I said, Tracy, do you want these? They need to go. I had a big bag. They went right to Tracy. So she gave me one of her bags, which is great. I got rid of fabric and I got a bag and I didn't have to make it. <laughs> so this is the one I picked and it could not be cuter. I love that fabric and I love the carrots. And look how straight her line is. Mine wouldn't look like that. So this is what I picked from Tracy. Um, 
Brandy gave me a thank you gift. She had Stephanie make me one of her whipper keepers, and she said, this, she's, this is the fabric you needed. And it is, the little seagulls. I love it. So these are Stephanie's whipper keepers. Um, they have an elastic, and this project's already in mine, tucked in the pocket. So they open up, you've got your thread bed, your needle, there's a pocket here, there's a pocket here, there's a vinyl pocket here. They're so well made, I love them. And I adore this fabric with their little hats. You can't go wrong with seagulls and little hats. Stephanie also made me um, an 18 inch floss winder that she engraved with my little logo she made me with Emmy. We'll call this one Pepper, except she's too happy. Peppy's, Peppy's grumpy. And then I showed this in my other video, but she made me this floss keeper for the 324 project from Works by ABC because it's all these symbols and squares and symbols and squares. And I had put my floss very fancy like on a folder and I showed this out a video and she said, Helen, I think I can uh, improve on that a little for you. And she totally did. So now I'm gonna move my stuff over and she made it so that you can just mark, you know, whatever row you're working on. If it starts with a square, there's your square and your motif and square and motif. So you just kind of line them up. Um, Reese from the Crafty Vermilkin, she had a few of these left and Reese took them for her shop. So if it's something that you're looking for, I will link her below. I don't know if she's mailing, she's the one you'd reach out to. Start, start there and see if that's something you're interested in. Uh, and then the other thing, I had done a little pre-order with the Crafty Vermilkin for a scan of floss, a package of beads, and a thing of pom-poms. I didn't even bring them down. And you could put in there if you were like pick up at the retreat and she brought it down. And when I went to pick it up, she handed me a basket. <laughs> when I had gone up with a group of friends a few weeks, a month ago, um, they were having grand opening raffles baskets and I won one of the raffle baskets. I didn't even know. So she said, I just figured I'd bring it down to you. So it had this really cute vinyl bag. I had a chart in it, but I already had it. Um, it was from Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery. The I think it's called the Stitcher's House or the Retreat House. Um, we gave that chart out last year at Stitch Main, but there was another woman there when I was walking back to my table who didn't have it, so now she does. I passed that on. It has another floss wonder. I believe Stephanie made these as well from the Crafty Grimalkin. I hope. A really cute finishing fabric. One of her needle minders with the black cat. A pair of scissors that it wants to stick to. And perfect for me, a nail hook kit. And this one's on my list and I don't have it. So this will be fun to put together. So that is kind of all of the <laughs> things that came home. It was a lot of things and I still have a lot of picking up and tidying up and figuring out left to do. Um, I actually did get quite a bit of stitching done. I brought a few projects that had some fill in and I worked on those. I had a new start with Donna um, and I showed all that stuff in my last regular update video. So sometimes I talk too much and I don't get any stitching done. So this time I did get some stitching done. That was different. Um, I tried to go around to as many tables as I can. It's hard. It's really hard to see everyone. Um, one morning I started, I had to use the bathroom, so I started at the back and I said I made it three quarters of a way around the outside row, but then that's where our table was, so I sat down. <laughs> and then I went back out later and I tried to do like the inside section. Um, I'm sure I didn't make it to everyone. So I hope everyone that did go has fun. If a retreat is something you're interested in, keep an eye out to see if you can find one close to you. Um, or put it out there if you'd like to try and meet some people at a library, at Panera, um, you know, someplace where you can sit and stitch and get to know people. There were first time retreaters there. There were long time retreaters there. And I think everyone just had a really good time. So, whew. that's my little recap. Um, 
like I said, if they decide and they need a little time to rest and recoup and see if it's something that they think they can take on again, um, sign me up. I'll be there. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'll see you with my regular update next time. Bye.